the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, February 11th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the Defense Department destroys bin Laden death photos hours after a FOIA request. Then, Washington, D.C. man SWAT teamed and charged over a spent shotgun shell. And Thomas Jefferson must be spinning in his grave after Obama visits his home and says... Got the Peter King. Well, the war against gun owners is on. If you are an American who likes to exercise your Second Amendment right, well, congratulations, you are a terrorist. That's right, it's no longer Al Qaeda that they're worried about. It's law abiding Americans who are being accused of being the next domestic terrorist cells to pop off. They, the powers that be are so concerned that their little Orwellian takeover is going to fail because of gun toting Americans. That's why they are brainwashing the police to, to turn against the very citizens that they're meant to protect. They're saying, you will be attacked by a patriot. So here, have this tank to patrol your city, or you will be attacked by a gun owner. So here, use this weaponized drone or these robots to go ahead and just police your tiny little neighborhood. That's why we saw the Ohio National Guard using Second Amendment uh, supporters and anti-government teachers in their little domestic terrorist drill scenario. It's because they're scared of us. The powers that be are so scared of gun-toting Americans. We are the checkmate in their new world order plan. The enemy is the free thinker, and they know that because we can take down the new world order, and that's why they are so afraid of us. They must disarm the nation. We've been telling you about this for years now, but it is on. They are really ramping up these efforts. Here we have a D.C. businessman who is now facing two years of jail time because he had a shell casing in his home. The police in D.C. raided his house looking for firearms and ammunition, gun cleaning equipment, holsters, bullet holders, and ammunition receipts, as if those were against the law. The police found no guns in the house, but they did write on the warrant that they, the items discovered. One was a single live round of ammo, which in actuality was one inoperable shotgun shell that misfired during a hunt years earlier that Mr. Wittishek had said he kept as a souvenir, and they also said they found a handgun holster, which is perfectly legal. Now, all of this came about because his disgruntled ex-wife told police that there were guns in the home. So, of course, you know, the police have to come in full force because they want to show support whenever, uh, you know, the neighborhood swi the snitch is uh, see something, say something. So they got to go in full force and say, oh, good job, you little angry, snitchy citizen. So this man, he has no criminal record. He's never had a firearm within the city limits, but he's being prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Now, he said he's not going to take that lying down. It's the principal. So he is going to risk prison time by going to trial instead of pleading guilty. So you're darn right, and that's what we have to do. And I hope that his jury understands jury nullification and throws that bad law out and says, you know what? The law of the land says there's a Second Amendment. And so this guy, he didn't do anything wrong. That's the power you have when you're in a jury, jury nullification. Look it up. Tell all your friends. But he's not the only one. Another Florida man is also opting out of pleading guilty. He was pulled over while he was driving through Maryland when the police officer, it was an unmarked patrol car and they were bird dogging him for about 10 minutes. Finally, they pull him over and they say, you have a concealed carry license. And the guy's like, how did you know that? So apparently they're running people's plates and they know that you have a concealed carry license. So the police there, it was the Transportation Authority Police, they refused to tell the man how they knew that he had a concealed carry license, but they proceeded to harass him and his family and search his car for two hours, demanding that the man turn over his firearm, which the man said, I left it in my safe at home in Florida. I mean, he knew that he was taking a road trip through a hostile territory, so he left his gun at home, even though he was going on this long road trip. 
but the police didn't believe him and they just wanted to arrest him for legally carrying a firearm that he had a concealed carry license for. So there, it's just more evidence. This isn't about stopping gun violence. This is about getting the guns. Do you really think if, the, if it was a criminal that was driving on the road that didn't register his gun or that didn't go and get a concealed carry license, but he still has all his guns on him, you think that guy got pulled over? No, because he wasn't registered in the system. And that is the problem. And that there is just more evidence that that's what they're doing. They are coming after law-abiding citizens who own guns. But no, it's not just adults who are being subjected to this bizarro police work. It's also children, little children who play with toy guns. Here we have another story of a kid who was at school. He was subjected to interrogation without his parents' knowledge, all because he forgot that he was playing with a toy gun the night before and it was accidentally in his sweater pocket. Now the boy voluntarily told his teachers about it because he knew that he shouldn't have it at school with him. But instead of using their common sense, the officials freaked out and subjected him to interrogation and intimidation tactics, threats and accusations of lying. Now, the boy's punishment was one day suspension which of course is gonna remain on his permanent record. And he's also been demanded to undergo counseling and psychiatric evaluation before he can return to school. And then of course the mother, once she finally was called in after they interrogated her 11 year old boy, they then reprimanded her and said she was a bad parent for allowing her son to play with toy guns. Now the fact that children are being patted down at school is it's frightening enough. I mean, that's just evidence of how this whole TSA security, enhanced security, has now trickled down through the airport into people's daily lives. And of course, they're starting it with children because that's where this training and this conditioning and this programming must begin to teach these kids. It's not about figuring out what is actually a threat and what isn't a threat. It's about training your children that they are going to be treated like terrorists, that they're all guilty, and that they have to respect the authority, respect the government. That's what this is all about. Total conditioning and control. Meanwhile, it's the police with the guns who are the real threat. They have shot another dog, folks. Another dog has been killed. This time, it was outside of a nine-year-old's birthday party. Here, the, the video is up on Infowars.com. It's, it's pretty heart-wrenching. I personally can't watch it. But the police shot a family's service dog just outside of a nine-year-old's birthday party. And then the police went on to issue the owner, who was a wheelchair-bound Parkinson sufferer, a citation because he let his dogs run outside off of a leash. Now, I get it. I understand leash, leash laws, and you can't let your dogs run around a neighborhood. But here, I mean, you see the police instantly gets out of the car. He doesn't wait for animal control. He doesn't try to call the owners. He gets out. He's got his gun, and he immediately shoots the dog. He just shoots this person's dog. And this is, this is how they respond. This is how they act. They shoot first. They have zero tolerance. So here we have these cops that are just so scared of a black lab that they just instantly whip their guns out and shoot it. But heaven forbid, if I want to protect myself against a would-be rapist or a home intruder, no, I can't have a gun because then I would be a terrorist. Only the authorities can have guns. Only the police can have guns. And I have to just depend on a government task force to just show up and stop a rape or a home intruder. Now the White House has just posted a memorandum announcing the creation of yet another government task force. This time they say they're gonna protect women from rape on college campuses. It won't actually do that, of course, but it will create a new layer of bureaucracy that colleges and universities will be mandated to follow to ensure that institutions comply fully with their legal obligations to prevent and respond to rape and sexual assault. Now, come on, let's get real. This prevention is only gonna occur when women take responsibility for their own self-defense. That means self-defense training as well as firearms training. 
the government task force is not going to show up. All they're going to do is just issue citations for the school if they don't comply with whatever new regulations they have to prevent rape on campus. I am going to be doing some special reports, getting this training on my own to just stand in solidarity with you women and say it is time that we take responsibility for our own self-defense. Like this young lady here, ooh, man, she gives it to him. Roundhouse kick to the face. That's what I'm talking about. I am going to get some of that training and I want all of you women to stand in solidarity with me and let's all do this together. Take responsibility for our own self-defense. Let's not sit around for Obama, Mr. I can do whatever I want, who thinks he's invincible to protect us. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm sure you're I'm not supposed to, but sorry, we're breaking protocol here. I didn't see that. Always the front. That's all right. That's the good thing about being president. I can, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Seems Obama is always breaking protocol to suit his own needs. That announcement, uh, that comment came just shortly after the White House announced that it would once again be extending the employer mandate, delaying it for another year. So, of course, that is just simply to ease the political tensions that are going to come with this year's election. And, of course, this employer mandate has been changed once again without any input from Congress. Generally speaking, you get pass the next election by changing your policies, by announcing new initiatives, but not by wantonly changing the law lawlessly. I mean, this is stuff that, that, that you do in a banana republic. Krauthammer went on to say that it's now reached a point where this lawlessness is so endemic that nobody even notices or complains. That's why Obama just struts around and casually gloats about doing whatever he wants to do because he's the president. Now, Krauthammer says that these are not adjustments or transitions. These are political decisions meant to minimize the impact leading up to an election. It's changing the law in a way that he is not allowed to do. But obviously, Crodhammer didn't get the memo because Obama does what he wants. He does what he wants to do, even if it is against the law. And no one's going to stop him, apparently. So is it any wonder why government agencies also just do whatever they want to do without any regard to the law, the law of the land, the Constitution? Here we have a Muslim woman who finally knows after seven years why she was put on the no-fly list. It's because an FBI agent checked the wrong box. That's right. He was filling out a terrorism form, and he checked the wrong box that labeled this wheelchair-bound Stanford University scholar as a terrorist. She was cuffed, detained, and denied a flight from San Francisco to Hawaii in 2004. And after seven years of litigation, two trips to a federal appeals court, and $3.8 million worth of lawyer time, we know, now know that instead of admitting to the error, high-ranking President Barack Obama administration officials spent years covering it up, asserting the so-called state secrets privilege. In his declaration, Eric Holder assured the judge that the government wouldn't be claiming national security to conceal administrative error or to prevent embarrassment, but that's an assertion that we now know is impossible because we have the facts. Now, the Department of Justice says that for a person to know if they are on the no-fly list would harm national security. But see, this is what the issue is. Innocent people are being targeted and tagged as terrorists because some idiot can't check a box. And we're just supposed to allow these people to just run amok and mess with our freedoms in the name of safety and national security, and then they never have to check themselves and they just cover up all their mistakes. Now they're still trying to, they're busted because they've been trying to cover up the bin Laden raid. And here the Pentagon is desperate to keep these images out of the public domain and they've been caught. The Department of Defense gave an order to destroy bin Laden death photos hours after a FOIA request. Judicial Watch, which they were the group that filed that initial FOIA request, they published an email that was released to them by the Department of Defense. And it says that one particular item that I want to emphasize is photos, particularly UBL's remains.